My life to yours. My breath become yours. <laughs> Hi, Internet. I'm Steve. Welcome to Ratho. AWAKENING! The system on Nalthus that uses investiture from endowment and color in order to give life to non-living things, most often fabric or other textiles. Awakening is one of the few and neutral magic systems in the Cosmere. Whatever I use to awaken something, most of the time I can get it right back when I'm done, so there's no net change. The investiture used for awakening is a little different than that used for other magics. The shard endowment is resident on Nalthus, and matching her intent, every person born there is endowed with a bit of extra investiture called biochromatic breath. The color of life. This breath can be given away, leaving you with a little less investiture than an average human in the Cosmere, or collected and used to awaken. Anyone in the Cosmere can learn to awaken. All it requires is breath, the investiture, color, the key, and a command, the intent. The breath is easy enough. Everyone born on Nalthus, or at least native Nalthian, has one, and if people are willing, you can get more. Color is even easier. It's everywhere. Awakening causes the color of something you're touching to bleach to gray. The color itself is consumed in order to allow the transfer of breath. You can't pull color from a living thing, and white and gray won't work, but everything else is fair game. Richer or deeper colors can make awakening easier, perhaps related to the amount of light energy those pigments are able to absorb. But even if the source of color isn't very big or bright, if you've got enough breath, you'll be fine. There are other tricks to make awakening easier, like putting a piece of yourself into the thing you're awakening, but they're not always necessary. Then comes the command, which must be said clearly, in your native language, and with the right visualization. These are usually simple instructions with concrete ideas behind them, and therefore easy to visualize. Grab things. Untie. Feed me that grape. It's possible to use more complicated or more abstract commands. Become as my fingers and grip that which I must. Fight for me as if you were me. Go down to Taco Bell and get me a number 10 with chicken instead of beef and a large watermelon freeze. But those will naturally have more complicated visualizations and usually require more breath. That's where the intent intent really comes into play. You could train a parrot to say command phrases, but because there's no intent behind it, nothing would happen. Without the proper visualization, the words are meaningless. This makes awakening a little different than most other systems, whose intent is manifest in the act of trying to use the magic. If your visualization, your intent, is not clear enough with awakening, it won't work. Honestly, this is actually a really good thing. Imagine if awakening were as simple as saying certain words and sucking up a color. If the power to use this magic system was still breath, you could be tricked into giving away part of your soul just by looking at the wrong teleprompter. I'm Ron Burgundy? The more difficult use of intent means it's impossible to steal breath. The command, my life to yours, my breath become yours, must be said willingly. Likewise, when trying to awaken, if the mental picture of what you want the object to do isn't clear enough, you'll transfer breath to it, but it won't be able to do anything. The amount of breath used will vary depending on what you're awakening as well. The law of biochromatic parallelism states, the closer a host is to a living shape and form, the easier it is to awaken. So objects that are in a human or animal shape will require less breath than simple blocks or squares, possibly because of the perception of the user. Likewise, things that were once alive are easier to awaken than that which has never been alive. So wood or fabrics made from natural fibers will take significantly less breath than stone or metal. Biochroma, being the color of life, naturally seeks the patterns of life and so will more willingly flow into that with which it's familiar. What would that mean about plastics? In relation to this, the biochromatic law of comparability says that the amount of breath required to awaken something isn't necessarily indicative of its power once awakened. So even though it's possible to awaken a square piece of cloth, it would require much more breath than fabric cut into the shape of a person, and the strength and function of the two would be relatively the same. There are four different types of biochromatic entities that are technically awakened. The only naturally occurring type is type 1, spontaneous sentient biochromatic manifestation in a deceased host, or the returned. These are people who, after death, are endowed with a single superpowered breath that brings them back to life and makes them tall, pretty, and amnesiac. This divine breath immediately bumps them up to the fifth heightening, which usually requires about 2,000 normal breaths. Returned have the ability, like all Nalthians, to give up their divine breath, which, when received by a normal human, can cure virtually any disease, heal wounds, even regrow body parts. However, because that one breath is what's keeping them alive, giving it away kills the returned. Returned are supernaturally strong and fast, and it seems their bodies, modeled after their own subconscious view of perfection, or self, feed off investment. Gorging or starving would returned won't affect their weight, and exercise, or lack thereof, won't make them stronger or weaker. However, because they only have the one breath, if they don't consume an additional breath within eight days, they will die. Again. 
Type 2 biochromatic entities are mindless manifestations in a deceased host, commonly known as the lifeless. While the returned have one breath that's 2,000 breaths strong, lifeless only have the small portion of investiture that normal Nalthians can give away, making them even less invested than drabs, those who have given away their breath. These are awakened corpses, not fully alive, that can follow and interpret commands given by an awakener. They're not like zombies, even though they're basically undead. No eating of people here. In fact, returned are kind of more analogous to zombies, because they have to consume a part of a human in order to keep living. In fact, in other areas of Nalthus, returned are thought of almost like vampires. But well, like the returned, lifeless don't need to eat or exercise. Once awakened, they will continue to function for years if well taken care of. Damaged muscles replaced, cuts sewn, and particularly if their blood is replaced with a substance called ichor alcohol. The discovery of ichor alcohol, as well as certain specific commands, allowed lifeless to be created with just one breath, rather than the previous 50, effectively doubling the size of armies, and making making dead bodies a more valuable resource. However, corpses tend to be sticky. Ugh. No, not juicy, though I suppose that's true too. No, don't like that. The breath used to awaken a lifeless gets stuck and can't be retrieved by the awakener. This is related to the nature of breath becoming keyed to the holder's identity. However, because lifeless still have their own brain, they are able to interpret more complex orders, and can even be given new commands without the infusion of more breath. The most common type of awakened object is type 3, a biochromatic manifestation in an organic host far removed from being alive. The most frequent use we've seen is the awakening of cloth, which, due to the life-giving and life-seeking nature of breath, or at least the practitioner's perception of it, mimics the structures of muscles and body parts. These usually require more breath than a corpse to awaken, often over a hundred, but that breath is retrievable, so you can get back whatever you put in. Like lifeless, an awakened object will continue to try and fulfill its command regardless of damage, though if it's destroyed, the invested breath may be lost. We've only ever seen one Type 4 object, a sentient biochromatic manifestation in an inorganic host. The original the original command given to this type of object becomes its own intent and influences the development of its personality. Inorganic material, like metal or stone, or seriously, what about plastic, requires a huge amount of breath to awaken, and can't even be done by anyone with less than 20,000. That's because the more breath you have, the more perks you get. These are referred to as the 10 heightenings. Around 50 breaths gets you the first heightening which grants you the ability to recognize breath auras given off by other people. This is where most people who are rich enough will stop, as it also gives resistance to most diseases and will extend your life by a decade or so. 200 breaths, the second heightening, gives you perfect pitch. Ooh. Yeah. 600 breaths, the third, gives perfect color recognition. That's red. That's blue. That's... puce. The fourth heightening, at a thousand breaths, allows you to perfectly sense the presence of others around you. Like when you can feel someone watching you and you know you're alone in your house, except for real. The fifth heightening is where it gets good. You become functionally immortal. Your body is at its maximum resistance to age, illness, and disease, and all for the paltry cost of... 2,000 souls. The sixth heightening, through sheer raw oomph of 3,500 breaths, allows you to awaken things without the necessary training. You can understand and use basic commands instinctively, as well as learn more difficult things more easily. 5,000 breaths takes you to the seventh heightening, which is pretty stinking rare considering how many people it would take, and allows you to see the breath auras of objects, so you can tell if something has been awakened or had breath stored in it. The handful of people who've reached the eighth heightening, which requires around 10,000 breaths are able to instinctively break or override commands given to awakened objects, including lifeless. Helpful if there's a zombie squirrel rampaging around in your palace. The ninth blood heightening, the ninth heightening, comes with a double bonus, which is good because it's double the amount of the breath of the eighth. But with that much breath, you can awaken things on the wrong side of the law of biochromatic parallelism. Never alive and not shaped like anything that was, like stone or steel. It takes a freak ton of breath and commands worth killing for, but you've got 20 thousand, so it's whatever. That amount of breath also lets you awaken objects you're not even touching. I hear, and I obey. There's only one person, kinda, known to have reached the tenth heightening, the god king of Holandron. With 50,000 breaths, light within their aura bends and splits into prismatic colors. The use of color as a fuel for awakening becomes perfect, draining completely to white instead of gray. With this much investiture, spoken commands can become obsolete, and users can learn with difficulty to awaken with just a mental command. There may be even more abilities granted by the tenth heightening, but it's a really small sample size, so... 
50,000 breaths is a huge amount of concentrated investiture. But even with smaller amounts, some strange things can happen. Breath is investiture given by edgely, or endowment, in addition to the innate investiture of the human soul. But some of that innate investiture must get pulled along when breath is given away, or else breathless Nelthians wouldn't be drab, they'd just be normal. This portion of innate investiture must carry with it a speck of the personality of its original host, which means that breath itself has its own intent, though it would be too small to affect anything on its own. If you have a lot of breath, these micro-intents would basically cancel each other out and just function as general investiture. However, if the breath is collected from a population of like-minded people, the concentrated intent lingering in the accumulated souls can actually influence the host, similar to how the personality of a shard holder is influenced by the intent of their shard. We've seen this happen to one person, Var, the prisoner in the prologue of Warbreaker. He collected his breath, at least a thousand, as he was at the Fourth Heightening, from others who wanted to overthrow the Holandran government. So his resolve was strengthened from all their concentrated breath. Brandon has said that this could be an issue in some things that happened in the next book, when we hopefully get it. Speaking of the next book, still tentatively called Nightblood, we may actually get a lifeless as a viewpoint character, implying they're not nearly as oblivious as everyone thinks. We get hints of this in Warbreaker, Claude ain't that much of a Claude, but a lifeless chapter being more than just for 16 pages is honestly a surprise. We've also seen evidence of awakening powers that affect more than just inanimate objects or dead bodies. At the very end of Warbreaker, so if you haven't finished, skip to here, Vasher claims that he knows commands that can erase people's memories. And we actually see this in use with the kidnapped girl they rescue. Vasher has her repeat a phrase, and her biochromatic aura flickered, after which she seemed to have no memory of her trauma. Given that it's possible to invest breath within yourself to be separate from yourself, as evidenced by Vasher being able to hide his returned nature, there must be a way to use your own breath to heal bits of your spirit web, which is kind of nutty to think about. Because of the events in Warbreaker, we're able to get a better understanding of some things that are happening in the Cosmere as a whole. My next video will be an attempt to build a timeline for the Cosmere, so hit subscribe to be sure you see it. We're almost done with this Investiture Analysis series, but if you've missed any, you can check them out here. If you want more Warbreaker, Brandon has a chapter-by-chapter -chapter annotation on his website, linked below, so you can read and find out.